So one thing led to another, and alhamdulillah, I started attending Quran classes. I would go to the masjid. I would talk with other sisters. And alhamdulillah for me, I had, as I mentioned before, a very diverse group. But alhamdulillah, I also had close American sisters that were going through the same thing that I was going through. So we would compare notes, talk about our families, how our family was relating to this. Um, were they having a hard time with it? So we had kind of a, a private little group, but it was very supportive. So it was the perfect, perfect thing for me, exactly what I needed. Because I needed to feel that I was part of something important, as well as part of something that I was doing something with my life that was that I could make a difference. So one thing led to another, and alhamdulillah, thanks be to God, that as my, I feel my faith or my iman grew stronger, I wanted to venture out a little bit more and talk to more people. My husband at that point, uh, we, we have two children, my husband at that point said that if I feel comfortable working, this is something that it, it's fine with him. Muslim women are able to work. We are able to hold political office. We are able to be a, a vibrant part of the community. We are not just supposed to sit at home and just watch TV or, or just cook and clean and things like this. We should be participating people in the community, something to make a difference. This is why Allah has given us life. And I feel very strongly that for all of us, whether we are male or female, we need to make a difference. So for me, alhamdulillah, I had a very supportive husband that, uh, that supported me in whatever I did. I was able to go out and work. And alhamdulillah also, you know, even in the beginning, some of my co-workers have commented in the beginning that they didn't know if I would feel uncomfortable to answer questions. But I have always reassured anyone that I've ever talked to that please ask me questions. These are the ways that you will learn about the true Islam rather than what you hear in the media. Unfortunately, in the media we see many erroneous things where they're talking about um, how women are are held down in Afghanistan by the Taliban, in Saudi Arabia, where women cannot even drive a car, that they're not able to leave their homes. This is not Islam. And alhamdulillah, I was able to find what true Islam is. And alhamdulillah, for the people around me, that I wanted to learn what not the cultural Islam is, but the true Islam. So when I found out that this is not true Islam, it gave me even more faith and more courage to continue and to talk to people. Because unfortunately for the media, as I said before, there are so many things that are misconstrued or, or um, said to be completely true, which are far from the truth. Another thing that I have discovered most people that have asked me questions are amazed when they find out that Islam has the same important people that are in the Bible as well as in the Quran and, and in the Torah. So for me, I keep on telling them that in our Quran, we have, we have one book that is written just, it's called An-Nisa. It's um, the book for women, the translation is for women, where it talks about women, the importance of women. There's also another book in our Quran that is, that is just for Miriam, which is the translation for that is Mary. She is the mother of Jesus. And in this book, it talks about the importance of Mary, um, her role in the birth of her son that she was an honorable, straightforward wo woman, that she was a virgin, that was decided by God to be the mother of, of Esau or Jesus. And so in our Quran, we talk about, it is discussed in there, the importance of women. 
And this for me has always been very important, that I feel whenever I talk to women, I stress that we do not wear hijab just for the sake of being oppressed uh, by our husbands or fathers or, or brothers. This is something that is, that is because of modesty. It protects us from the society. And this is another thing that I always had a hard time understanding, being raised in basically a Christian country such as the United States, where women talk about freedom but unfortunately, they're talking about freedom of hairstyle, about um, clothing, that they can dress in very, very little clothes or whatever. And then that is freedom to them. My idea of freedom is completely the opposite. My idea of freedom is where people are not looking at me because of what size I am or how my hair looks or something. Once my coworkers and people that I talk to get used to my scarf usually it gets to the point where they feel very comfortable asking me questions. I want people to look at me not just as dressed funny or or an oddity in, in America. I want people to look at Muslim women as being intelligent, having something important to say, having something to bring to the community. And, and it's been a blessing for me that people, once they get to know me, they feel comfortable asking me questions. And of course, we as Muslim women have great role models.